Hey! What's up, Arnold? You got back problems again. Well, experiments on YouTube are good for views, but not so much for your health. Congratulations! You are prematurely aging. There's almost nothing you can do. All creatures age. Well, almost all. The naked mole rat, for instance, practically doesn't age at all. The naked mole rat has a unique genetic structure. It has a very small number of mutations and, therefore, no age-related diseases. It hardly ages at all, and most often it simply dies in fights with other animals. Naked mole rats live underground digging their own passages, so sometimes they're called naked diggers. Arnold, what are you doing? Kids are watching us! Ah, are you imitating a naked mole rat? Do you want to see how everything goes on down there? Telomeres are responsible for aging. They're the tips of chromosomes that protect the chromosomes from damage. Over time, telomeres become shorter. When they become too short, cells stop dividing and die. But not in the case of naked mole rats. Be careful! As I said, mole rats live underground and are typically very aggressive. Naturally, since they don't die from diseases, fights are the only thing that somehow regulates the number of mole rats. Without fights, mole rats would have overrun the earth long ago. The naked mole rat is not the only animal that doesn't age and dies young. Among the ageless animals are also turtles, whales, jellyfish, fish, and salamanders. In general, a bunch of things that fly, swim, or crawl. Apparently, walking is harmful. Ancient Vikings believed that those who die in battle will go to Valhalla, a paradise for warriors. There's an unlimited amount of food and other pleasant things there. So, your mole rat got lucky. But you are not so much. I decided to go to the morgue and say my final goodbyes to you. Oh my god, are you alive? No, you've been resurrected. It seems that the elixir you drank worked. You are now immortal. Congratulations, Arnold. You will now be the longest living organism on Earth. Your body is now regenerating, and the term cellular senescence is now just a joke for you. Well, how are you going to use your immortality? Got it. You'll cross the road on red. Grope random girls. You'll also win the Kenny McCormick Lookalike Contest. That's ridiculous. You have an infinite number of years ahead of you, and you waste them on this? Arnold, you could study everything in the world, learn any martial art, and even go explore and colonize new galaxies. Arnold, how about maybe stop wasting your time? Okay, so maybe for 200 years, you're gonna binge watch every single Netflix series. I see you got a little bored. Plus, your house has started to decay, and you're still young. One of the disadvantages of immortality is that you have to outlive all your loved ones. In addition, the world around you is changing rapidly. But you will lag behind in progress, and you will feel superfluous in society. Everything that was once important to you will gradually disappear. Over time, everything will cease to please and surprise you at all, because you've already seen everything. You will become deeply depressed. Sorry, friend, but it's no use. Stop it, Arnold. You know you're immortal. Arnold, let's go watch the show. Arnold. Okay, I'll leave you alone. Hey, are you guys gonna try and make someone immortal? Whoa, who is this? I'm guessing this guy has no idea what loneliness is. I think we found just the guy you're looking for. I can't wait to find out how you're gonna make him immortal. Transplanting Voorhees DNA into the handsome dude is a great idea. From a biological standpoint, you can make a person immortal. To achieve this, you simply need to remove from the DNA the propensity to age and suffer from disease. But today, Snot and Gob are trying to figure out how can you kill something that's immortal. The first test is teleportation. To move an object from point A to point B, you need to move all the atoms and neural connections exactly as 
as they were in the original. After that, the original has to be destroyed, with only the perfect copy remaining. Therefore, theoretically, teleportation kills both a mortal and an immortal. Hmm. I was expecting a slightly different result, but it's much too early to give up. Here we have an alkaline bath that can dissolve any living creature. It's a shame these aliens didn't watch Breaking Bad, because after all, then they know that alkali will dissolve a bathtub faster than a human body. I think the next test is gonna kill you for sure, handsome dude. It's gonna start by destroying your brain. No one on this planet can endure something like this for more than a day. Congratulations, Arnold! You just volunteered for the bulletproof skin test. Wow! You still alive, Superman? So, a successful test. Hey, Arnie, these guys seem pretty happy with the outcome, but they want to up the ante. A grenade launcher fires a grenade from its barrel at a speed of 120 meters per second, and it can pierce 50 centimeters of steel armor. Now we need something more serious. For example, skin made from fullerene. This is the strongest material known to science, an allotrope of carbon, and it's 200 times stronger than the strongest steel. Congratulations, Arnie! Your fullerene skin can withstand a rocket-propelled grenade, which, of course, cannot be said about your brain. The shockwave has turned it into jiggly jelly. But luckily, you're in a super-secret lab. That's right, Arnold! Perfect time to get away! After all, now automatic weapons can't hurt you. In fact, you can't be strangled, and even getting hit by a car won't hurt you. But your strength, Arnie, you little wimp, that hasn't changed a bit. But instead, as I can see, now you've got nerves of steel. But the problem is, Arnold, now you have to hide for the rest of your life so that no one knows that you've got super skin. Wait, what? I see, Arnie. You'll do anything for likes. I never thought I'd say this, but I feel sorry for you, Arnold. And I know someone who can help. Dr. Joe has a secret formula that can reduce any pain. But you redheads need more anesthesia than ordinary people. This is due to a gene that gives you your red hair color. Our bodies are made up of a huge number of cells. In order for them to interact, there are special proteins in the cell membrane, ion channels. Ion channels are something like gates for the senses. Thanks to them, we can feel warm and cold, smell and taste, and also experience pain. You can eat plenty of chocolate, Arnold. It's scientifically proven that chocolate can cause headaches. Perhaps, Arnold, this defect suits you, since you'll never have to feel the physical pain that I have to inflict on you. But don't celebrate just yet, buddy. Pain can also be emotional. So hold on. For example, unrequited love. This type of pain is experienced by people who sold their Bitcoin in 2015. Arnie, friend, cheer up. You don't feel pain, and this can help emphasize your individuality. For example, you can insert a diamond into your forehead, just like the famous rapper Lil Uzi Vert. There are some people in the world who don't feel any pain at all. This is a consequence of a defect in the SCN9A gene. Such people can distinguish cold and hot. They feel touch, but the pain signals don't come through. Arnold, are you really going to beat up Tagai's boyfriend for that kiss? Remember, Arnold, not feeling pain doesn't mean that you're immortal. You need to go to the hospital immediately. I see. You're still the same lazy guy. So while you don't feel pain, even ordinary tape will do. Oops, it looks like the effect of Dr. Joe's drug is over. Welcome back to normal life, Arnold. Wow, Arnold, congratulations! You died and went to heaven. Arnold, get in line and wait for St. Peter to let you in. Ooh, how cool is this? Hey, wow, look, is that John Lennon? No, wait, it's just Jesus. Here there's even a wall of paintings of God made by great historical artists. Here there's e In ancient times, people believed that God was oh. terrifying and bloodthirsty. 
For example, Aztecs constantly sacrificed people to their god Huitzilopochtli to make it rain. The ancient Greek gods personified human qualities or natural phenomena. Unfortunately, Arnie, in the Christian paradise, unlike the Muslim one, you don't get 72 virgins. But hey, look, right there, it's John Lennon. Or is that Jesus again? And here he is. He has many names. The Creator, Jehovah, Adonai, Yahweh, God. Oh, shh, he's sleeping. You probably shouldn't mess with his stuff, Arnie. Arnold, what are you thinking? You can't go in there. This is the control center for the whole world. Don't touch anything, Arnold. Oh, this is not good. Over the past few centuries, religious belief in the world has been dropping. And God is the most popular being in the world, has a lot of haters. You dare play God, Arnold. Man is simply too greedy for this role. There are lots of examples from history, and they all ended pretty badly. Arnold, stop! This ain't a joke, buddy. Great. Now everything's gone haywire. Fanatical faith has always led to wars. And now a nuclear crusade has begun. Arnold, stop before it's too late. Are you even listening to me? Phew, just in time. Hey, God, don't take this the wrong way, but... You really now are in the actual Wild West. And they call it wild for a reason, buddy. And nowhere is this moniker embodied more than in Fort Griffin, Texas. The fort was originally designed to protect ranchers and farmers who live nearby. The city quickly became a popular stopover for cowboys and criminals, and law enforcement was virtually nil. As a result, the city became even more dangerous, and it looks like you're now the sheriff of this city. Sorry. Is it just me, or are our sheriffs not very popular in this little old town? Arnold, really? The first thing you decided to do as head honcho around here was update your wardrobe? Mm. Why so surprised? Oh. The average life expectancy in the Wild West was about 35 years. And for sheriffs, it was decreasing exponentially. Here comes your first good deed, Sheriff. What? You thought only cowboys carried guns. In reality, most cowboys were like shepherds driving cattle. They were pretty much harmless folk. But people with weapons were called gunfighters, and they earned their living with guns. The most legendary shooter in the whole Wild West was Frenzy Bill Longley. According to various sources, he killed up to 85 people and had a $1,000 bounty on his head. Luckily, people didn't have such good aim back then. By the way, it was the era of the Wild West that gave birth to the culture of owning guns in America. Arnold, listen. Hearing that kind of music is definitely not good. In Westerns, it usually means that bandits have entered town and are probably gonna do something bad like rob a bank. It's Dirty Harry, One-Eared Tom, and Handsome Bill. Hmm, why were they given such obvious nicknames back then? Interesting solution, Arnold. You blew up the bank so the bandits can't rob it. You're a natural-born strategic genius. No, Arnold, you forgot about the train carrying the gold. According to statistics, there were 241 train robberies during the time of the crazy Wild West. Quite good statistics. You forgot one of the sheriff's main rules. Your revolver must always be in perfect working order. Adios, Arnold, and please quit this dang job. You just ain't cut out for a partner. No. Whoops. We have a small problem. Arnold, don't be scared, but you are buried alive. Just like Rodrigo Cortez. <laughs> uh, stop yelling already. Screaming increases panic, heart, and accordingly the amount of air you use. And you have a maximum of two hours of breathing in your coffin until you run out of oxygen. Arnold, your phone, you're only two meters deep. Hooray, there's one line of connection. Call your loved ones. They'll save you. But this isn't certain because for them, you're dead. They'll probably think your call is someone's stupid prank. Try to connect to the internet. Your post will be seen for sure. 
but only after they like a cat in a funny suit, a new post by Ariana Grande, and a funny-shaped potato. I have it. Geotag posts get 79% more engagement, and a post that says oil was found will 100% attract the attention of Donald Trump. In critical situations, a person's animal instincts wake up. Well, I expected that it would wake up in you. Arnold, when lacking oxygen, people often see hallucinations. Maybe we can Google what to do. Don't hammer a nail in your life like it's a coffin lid. Get out of your comfort zone. There's no way. Oh, kill Bill too. Do it like Uma Thurman. You need to punch a hole in the lid. Be strong in spirit. Collect all your anger like Naruto. Ooh, did it hurt? You need to somehow break the lid. Look if you have anything in your pockets. Ew, Arnold, what is that? Oh, give me a break. You won't even need them outside the coffin. Ooh, this will do. Breakthrough. Hit. It's like you're trying to escape from fascists or from the whining songs of Billie Eilish. You did it! Now you have to tamp all the dirt into the coffin to clear your way out. You have to lift your shirt so that it can be tied over your head. This is so that you don't suffocate from dirt falling on your head. Arnold! 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 Wake up! Hallucinations again. It's way easier for a person to get from out of a depth if it's equal or less than their height. I think you know what I'm getting at, Arnie. Today, we're gonna bury you alive for the third time. And since people have seen you perform this trick a bunch of times already, you're gonna do it in a special way this time. We're gonna handcuff you. And the coffin's gonna be made out of metal. Okay, Arnie, buddy. Ready? Get in. During past burials, you already learned the most important rule. You need to breathe calmly and deeply in order to conserve your oxygen. Okay, now quit being calm. We need to get the handcuffs off. It's really simple. All you need to do is break one finger on each hand so you can slip them through the cuffs. Oh, quit your belly aching, Arnie. You still got two more fingers left. Use your belt or watch to try to crack open the lid. A metal coffin has weak points all along the edges. Come on, Arnie, I was kidding. You can't break through the metal, doofus. There's two meters of earth above you, which is pressing down with a mass of almost two and a half tons. So this third burial will probably be your last. Arnie, Arnie. Arnie, where are you? Oh, you little bastard. Yes, you really are Arnie Houdini. In just the same way, Harry Houdini climbed through a secret compartment in the sidewall of the coffin and into a tunnel. And then through a hatch in the grave, he dropped down on the coffin from above and covered himself with a half meter layer of dirt. But where's the hatch, Arnie? Surprise! You didn't really think I'd let you out so easy, did you? Swim up, Arnold, before the concrete sets. Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you. The concrete solution, when interacting with water, forms alkaline molecules. And because there's a lot of moisture in your skin, then, well, it's gonna hurt. Congratulations, Arnold. You did it. You managed to attract attention to yourself. Revel in the glory. Today is your last day. Ah! Just like for 684,000 people every year from falling from a great height. Or due to a medical error, it's the third leading cause of death in the U.S. after heart disease and cancer. What the bejeebus? You got hit by an electric scooter. How ridiculous. Your senses begin to fail. Vision, smell, taste, and finally hearing. You, buddy, are dead. After cardiac arrest, you have six minutes before complete brain death. This time frame increases with anabiosis or hypothermia. One girl survives after six hours hours of clinical death. She lay in ice with a body temperature of 64 degrees, and it saves her life. But nothing's gonna help you now, buddy. In a minute, you've lost 10% of your oxygen. Oh, 
and your wallet. Your heart has stopped pumping blood, and blood clots are starting to form. However, your brain is now working more actively than it ever has before. An 87-year-old man was undergoing an electroencephalogram when he suddenly had a heart attack. 15 seconds before death, the EEG detected special brain waves in his head. Such waves occur while dreaming or during meditation. Therefore, at the time of your death, you really might recall your entire life. Arnold, right now you have 12 times more dopamine than usual and 20 times more more serotonin. That's why you're experiencing a most vivid dream. During clinical death, only 15% of people experience something terrifying. The rest see the faces of family members, animals or plants, past events, or even the classic white light. By the way, Thomas Edison's last words were, it's very beautiful over there. Hey, that's happened before. Arnold, don't you remember? What if our entire life is just a series of near-death experiences flashing through our minds in our last moments here on Earth? Hey, stop eating in the store! Those vegetables are GMO, genetically modified organisms. This tomato contains a silkworm gene, and your normal everyday cucumber has a 40% similarity to a human from a genetic standpoint. But don't be afraid. GMO isn't scary, and I know just how to prove it to you. Let's genetically modify you, Arnold. It's illegal to do such experiments on human beings. But in 2018, two genetically modified babies were born in China. They were programmed to have immunity to HIV. Now, we're in the Pentagon's tippity-top secret laboratory. They mainly produce GMO soldiers. CRISPR-Cas9 is a new technology that allows the DNA of one organism to be implanted into the DNA of another. A regular fish was implanted with genes from a bioluminescent jellyfish. Now it's a glowfish. Vegetables are modified for longer storage and better taste. But what about you, Arnold? Do you want to be taller? We can use the Michael Jordan gene. And we'll remove the sweating gene from you so you stop stinking so much. And meet Arnold 2.0. A new life has begun. Without sweat, people will finally sit next to you on the bus, and your neighbor's grandma will stop calling you a short little redheaded virgin. Now she'll just call you a redheaded virgin. Yes, genetic engineering isn't perfect yet, but it is the future. Designer GMO babies are coming soon. And it'll be possible to remove the cruelty gene from criminals. It's a new stage of evolution. Sweet dreams, Arnold 2.0. Hey, what's going on? Arnold, did you steal all the syringes from the lab? What, you want to inject yourself with the strawberry gene to smell good? And a corgi gene for a perfect butt? Don't do this, Arnold. Stop! Oh, ye gods, what have we done? I was wrong. Genetic engineering is dangerous, not only for the organism, but for the whole city as well. Is it really happening? Arnold, are you getting married? The world was consumed by a new epidemic. The infected have spots on their skin. A terrible rash covers their entire face. They cough continuously and their front teeth fall out. And in order not to be isolated, people are inoculating en masse by buying the vaccine on the black market, deliberately putting themselves at risk as the vaccine has not yet been approved. But they do this so they can return to normal life as soon as possible. Arnold, what are you doing here? Oh, are you on a date? That's cool, but you sure could find a place more romantic than this cafe on the outskirts of the city. Here she is. Wow, what did you tell her to get her to come on a date with you? Uh-oh, how did so many zombies get in here? Arnold, it seems that Susie is in trouble. An average zombie, it has green skin and smells like my grandmother's feet. 
At first glance, it may seem that this is just your ordinary gamer who hasn't eaten for three days. But no, zombies have their own diet. Usually, these cute creatures eat human brains. Arnold, what are you gonna do? Wow, no. That, that, that's what I call a gun. Who is that? Wow, no way. That's Chuck freaking Norris. And he's got an entire arsenal here. Now he's going to kick some butt. Yikes. This is kind of brutal even by my low standards. But very cool. Blimey, how many zombies are there? Looks like this big guy is the only one left. You call that a punch. This is a punch. Your date seems to have been canceled due to the unforeseen zombie attack. Arnold, don't forget about Susie. Crikey, are they immortal? Chuck, hit the gas. Huh, that went pretty okay. Oh no. Look, Arnie, you and Susie have something in common. Just like you, she loses her fingers. Hmm, it seems she's getting worse. Quick, do something. You guys gotta save her. So this is the guy can help us. Who the heck is he anyway? Grigory Rasputin, the most mysterious person of the 20th century. He's credited with hypnotic abilities and an extraordinary gift of healing. What a creepy place. Even worse than that cafe you invited Susie to, Arnold. What are we doing here? Where are we going? This is how I imagine the dentist office. 100% dreadful. Hey, can we maybe stop before it's too late? Here, everything is in the best traditions of Russian celebrations. Vodka, balalaika, bears, and dancing till morning. And here's the guy we need, Grigory Rasputin. This here's the big guy. It seems our healer has drunk an 80-proof potion. Looks like you're gonna have to figure things out on your own. You don't need to worry about him. Everyone is talking about the new vaccine. Many have already tried it out on themselves, but it turns out it has a side effect. People turn into zombies. This Rasputin guy turned out to be a real you necromancer. He took advantage of the situation and invented a vaccine that destroys the virus, but turns the living into zombies. Even Chuck is shocked. Chuck, your turn. Gosh darn it, how does he do it? He's even cooler than in Walker, Texas Ranger. So that's who Van Damme took lessons from. Ooh, here comes Daddy. This big guy is not going to be taken down so easily. Arnie, you're the only one left. Arnie, you are a warrior. Remember all the things I taught you. And most importantly, remember, there is no enemy but yourself. Arnold, are you? I knew it. Goodbye, Arnold. So, you decided to bulk up, did you? How dare they? Arnold, show them what you're worth. Wow, Arnold, your blood pressure's never been this high before. Be careful. High blood pressure affects the blood vessels in your eyes, which can lead to vision loss. Usually, such vision loss is temporary. Probably. Anyway, to get home safely now, you need a guide dog. Guide dogs undergo training that lasts one and a half years, and the cost of a guide dog can reach $20,000. What? A dog is too boring for you. What about a pony? Training a guide pony is easier than training a dog. Plus, it's a great option for people with allergies or for Muslims. Cool hat, Arnold. Being blind, you don't have quite so many leisure options. So put on your headphones and relax. But remember, exposure to sound above 85 decibels damages your hearing. By the way, the volume of headphones is 95 decibels, and a rock concert reaches 115 decibels. The noise of a jet engine reaches 160 decibels, at which eardrums burst, and 180 decibels is lethal. So you're home, Arnold. Um, do you live at the spaceport? No. Well, then be careful. Arnold! 
I'm sorry, but on top of everything, you've also gone deaf. But don't despair. For communication, people who are both deaf and blind have access to tactile sign language, the Lorna alphabet, or the Braille glove. The glove is a device with contacts made of conductive material. When connected, data is transmitted based on the Braille principle, and vibrational indicators are used to receive the signal. Hey, looks like you've mastered the glove and returned to your workouts. Only instead of the gym, you've walked into the women's locker room, buddy. This is awkward. But hey, at least your vision is returning, even if just for a second. <laughs>